Good morning. It's Lauren Lachman from the Tanglewood Wellness Center in Costa Rica. And I have been asked this morning to talk a little bit about glycemic load and how we might use that in terms of deciding what to eat, uh, specifically what, what fruits to eat. And so the first thing I want to point out about glycemic load is very few people understand it. Um, in fact, very few people even know that glycemic load exists. How many of you have, have heard of glycemic load? Some of you haven't. How many of you have heard of glycemic index? No. Okay, same people. So a lot of people know the glycemic index, but not the glycemic load. In fact, most people seem to think that glycemic index is an indicator of how much a food impacts your blood sugar. Does that sound reasonable to you guys in terms of what you know about this? Glycemic index, how much a food impacts your blood sugar, right? That's what most people think it is. Um, it's not. And so based on glycemic index, uh, people would say to you, if you have a blood sugar issue, uh, we have somebody here with a blood sugar issue, okay? Anybody who understands or thinks they understand glycemic index would say, don't eat watermelon. Anything over a 70 on the glycemic index chart, 100 is, the, is sort so of the, the mark everything is measured against. White bread is 100 on the glycemic index. Does white bread have a lot of sugar? No, but all starches break down into simple sugars. And in the absence of any real fiber, all that starch is converted to sugar and hits your bloodstream at one time. And so um, white bread has a high glycemic index of 100. But what does it mean? Does it mean that it affects your blood sugar a lot? Not necessarily, okay? Glycemic index is simply saying how quickly something lets go of its carbohydrates, how quickly it lets go of them, how quickly the body has, has access to them. So white bread, very rapid at 100. Watermelon, still considered a high glycemic index food at 72, okay, because it lets go of the sugar rapidly. Now, does that mean it would have a large impact on your blood sugar? Well, you might think so. It might seem logical to say, well, yeah, why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? Well, what if a substance lets go of its, its carbohydrates very rapidly, but there aren't that many of them? It shouldn't have much of an impact on your blood sugar. And that's the case with watermelon. Now, watermelon's pretty sweet. It can be. But watermelon on the glycemic load chart is a low glycemic load food. So what's glycemic load? Well, glycemic load is actually, it takes the glycemic index, how quickly a food lets go of its carbohydrates, and it multiplies it times the amount, the, the number of grams of sugar in 100 grams of the food. Okay? So... The way this works is anything from 1 to 9 or 0 to 9 is considered a low glycemic load food. Anything from 10 to 19 is a moderate glycemic load food. And anything from 20 and above is a high glycemic load food. Watermelon has a glycemic load of 3. Where anything up to 9 is considered low glycemic load. How can it be so low? Because watermelon is mostly water. And it also has a lot of fiber and not all that much sugar. Okay. So the fact that something has a high glycemic index is actually relatively meaningless by itself. Now, how should you use glycemic load? Well, to be honest with you, I don't know there's much agreement on this yet. Some people say that you need to take the glycemic load of the food, watermelon three, that's 100 grams of watermelon. And multiply it by the number of multiples of 100 grams you're eating. Right? So there's 1,000 grams in a kilo. Kilogram. 1,000 grams, right? So if you're having a kilogram of watermelon, you need to multiply 3 times 10. And that gives you 30, which is very high. And some people say it's still a high load on your body. Is that true? I don't think that's accurate. Okay, why not? Well, do you eat all that watermelon at one time? Is it hitting your bloodstream at one time? No. You're going to eat one kilo of watermelon over the course of 20 or 30 minutes. Right? Aren't you? You guys, you can respond. 
This is yes, this is no. You can speak if you like. What's that? More time than that. Okay. So, you know, if it's at least 30 minutes, maybe it's even 45 minutes for some of you or an hour for some people, your body has time to deal with that sugar as it's coming in. So I don't know that there is a, you know, maybe what you'd have to do to be completely accurate is say, well, how many grams, how many multiple, you know, how many hundred grams are you taking in per minute or per 10 minutes or per 15 minutes to be accurate? How's your body actually able to handle it? Most people find that when they eat watermelon, there's no negative impact on their blood sugar. Very few people see a negative impact on their blood sugar. Now, let me be clear that the impact on blood sugar alone isn't telling you everything. Why not? I mean, this is confusing, right? This is, it's a little complex because we're talking about a living system. And a living system interacts with everything. Each living system interacts with everything differently based on its condition, its toxicity, its vitality, its level of hydration, its level of efficiency. So it's entirely possible that someone could eat something that theoretically would be a high glycemic load for the body, but manage to, to maintain perfectly normal blood sugar. Does that mean that's an okay thing to do? Not necessarily, in my opinion. Because if you're forcing the body work much harder when it doesn't need to do that, how could that be beneficial? Does this make sense? So, so for instance, you asked about glycemic loads. Watermelon is a, a three. Oranges are four. Okay? Orange juice is 11. Nearly three times the glycemic load. Why? There's no fiber. The fiber slows down the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream. So it's going to have much more of an impact. Okay? Um, most fruits are going to be anywhere between around three and six or seven. Mangoes, I think, are about an eight, and papaya apples are about a nine. Bananas, 12 to 15, depending on the variety and the you know, sugar content of every fruit is going to be a little bit different. They're going to be around 12, 15. That's a moderate glycemic load. So in terms of using the glycemic load in order to decide what to eat, you don't really have to think too much about this. Okay? In almost every case, the glycemic load is, is low. It's fine for most people. Now, you know, could you create a problem? Well, again, um, you know, I, 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 do, I do battle on Facebook almost every day somewhere about smoothies and juices. Someone who wants to say smoothies are better, easier for the body to digest, and they're, you know, they're better, they're healthier than eating food, which makes no sense at all to me because we're never going to improve on nature. But here's an issue. Anyone ever have a mango smoothie? Maybe you take mangoes and water. Maybe you take bananas and mangoes and water. How many mangoes might you drink? How much smoothie could you drink? Could you drink a liter of smoothie? Two? One liter, okay. How many mangoes could you have in a liter? How many? A lot. Well, that's helpful. Um, I don't know what that means to you, but six or seven maybe? Okay, okay so, I mean, it depends how big they are. But here's my point. How quickly could you drink a liter of mango smoothie? 15 minutes? probably a lot faster than you could eat the same number of mangoes. Everyone agree with me there? All the heads are nodding. So here's the problem. When we take it from its perfect natural packaging and we, we process it, which we're, we're running it through a machine that's a process. This is the original processed food, right? Came out of people's kitchens, blenders and, and juicers and food processors. Food processors are processing food. What we wind up with is something that we can consume much more quickly, which will have much more of an impact on our blood sugar. Does that mean that you can't maintain healthy blood sugar if you drink all that in 15 minutes? You might be able to do that if your body is healthy and vital enough. You might be able to manage that. But you're still forcing your body to have to work much harder to manage the blood sugar than you would be if you were eating those same number of mangoes over the course of 45 minutes, 
Because if you take them in one-third as quickly, they're going to have one-third the impact on your body because it's the volume of food coming in per time times the glycemic load that's actually saying how much impact it's having on your system. Does this make sense? So if we're eating whole food, fruit, we really don't have to think much about this. Bananas are going to be a moderate load. Dates, because they're allowed to dry on the tree before they get picked, and they have therefore very low water content. A date's going to be roughly 20% water on average, about the same as a raisin. Okay, so what's the glycemic load of a date? Remember, anything from 20 and above is considered high. Dates can be 40 or above on the glycemic load chart. That's a massive load. So what do you think? Is it a good idea to take two dozen dates and put them in a, in a liter of water and blend it up? Datorade, right? Yeah. I feel great when I drink Datorade. Yeah, it's like, kind of like taking speed or cocaine. Of course you feel energetic. Okay, your body is, your blood sugar is probably 297. You know, where it should be under 100. Okay. And if it's not, it's tending to go there, and your body's working hard to manage it to not do that. So, you know, it, remember, um, and again, I, you know, I, I just said the same thing yesterday. Have a good time. If you like to do smoothies and stuff, do it. I, I really don't think doing a bunch of dates and water is a good idea, but you know, if you want a smoothie every once in a while, that's fine. Don't make it your regular daily occurrence. I mean, if, if what you're committed to is the highest level of health, the best you can do do whatever you're willing to do, but the best you can do, be clear about this, the best you can do is to eat the whole foods. Not to blend it, not to juice it, not to, not to chop it up, not to make fancy dishes. The very best we can do is that we maximize our digestion because we don't maximize our digestion by running something through a machine. All that does is it ensures that we don't have it in the mouth as long as it needs to be. We're not, the machine's not breaking it down to the cellular level, so we're not able to absorb it. We still have to digest it, but we're not starting the digestion the way we need to in the mouth. We're not sending the signals to the stomach to prepare the optimal environment because it doesn't spend the time in the mouth to do that. Okay? So we're never going to improve on nature. You know, if you want to enjoy a juice or a smoothie, have a good time. But let's stop pretending we can do better than the amazing things nature's given us. Now, I, I can't tell, has anyone here experienced this already, like before coming, maybe, maybe based on conversations with me or my videos? Anyone get off juices and smoothies and feel better as a result? None of you have done this? You have, a little bit, okay. So two of you have done a little bit of it. Um, I, you know, I, I hear from, from people all the time, because I've done videos on this before, who say, you know, I was watching your videos, I stop drinking smoothies. I feel much better now that I only use whole foods. Okay? So, so again, remember, you know, it's about your consistent behavior. If you love smoothies, have a smoothie once a week or once a month. I mean, I probably have them, you know, a few times a year. Okay? Fine. It's no problem. But having them every day because you think they're better than the whole foods that you started with, you're deluding yourself. We are losing nutrition. We are making it harder for the body to deal with the sugar content. We're overloading the body with nutrients. We're, we're actually probably getting poorer digestion in most cases. You know, this is definitely not better. Now, people will argue and people will point to themselves or others who did better because they started using juices or smoothies. Remember, as soon as we improve anything, our health is going to improve, okay? That doesn't mean it's as good as it can get on smoothies. I, you know, I'll guarantee anybody, um, get your body clean and then eat just whole foods, you're going to do much better than you ever have in your entire life. There's no way to do better than that. Yeah, uh, we got Ziv back there pointing to himself as an example. Um, how about, I don't know how many of you are aware of this. Uh, Ziv, how long, three years, hiatal hernia, incessant burping, almost no burping now. Amazing. Feeling better than you felt. You said clearer mentally than you've ever felt in your life. Amazing. Okay. This is what happens. This was uh, 30 days. 30 days fasting. You're now on seven, eight. Eight days refeeding. His eighth day refeeding. 
anybody can experience amazing shifts. I mean, this was a serious condition that medicine says, sorry, no, can't do anything about that. I mean, there's surgery, which, you know, is very problematic and not always successful. But that's all. That's all they have. There's nothing else you can do. Okay? So, um, any questions about anything we've covered? Does that answer your questions? Now, one quick uh, point here. We've talked about fruit, and you asked about fruit, but you should know that things like um, grains are almost all high glycemic load foods for the reasons I mentioned with white bread. I mean, white bread, we were talking about glycemic index, but white bread and white rice and most processed grain products, cereals, etc., all high glycemic load. Why? Because even if they're called whole grain, that's marketing. They're not really whole grain. We can't digest whole grains, okay? We're not grain eaters. We can't do that. We can't digest it. So we process grains so that we're eating just the part that we can digest, usually the germ, the seed, right? And what we've done in processing is we've eliminated most of the fiber. So we've got these, these products, these, these foods, substances is a better word perhaps, these substances that people eat, not sure why, that are all carbohydrates, which break down to sugars, and in the absence of fiber, hit your bloodstream like that, all at one time. So they're at much higher glycemic load than fruit. And so all the people out there telling you, well, I've got a blood sugar, so I can't eat fruit, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay? Fruit is usually not a problem. Now, it is a problem for some people because of the way they eat fruit. What do I mean? Well, I grew up, for instance, um, we weren't, in my household, we didn't have cakes and candies and things like that. So dessert after dinner would be fruit. But putting fruit on top of a pot roast and mashed potatoes, that's a really bad idea. Because what happens? It sits in the stomach and ferments. Now we create problems, okay? But you know, as you guys all know, I'm advocating and, and doing for 23 plus years, one fruit at a time, most of the time. Mono fruit meals, you're not going to create problems. You're going to give your body the highest quality food, amazing water content. The, the sugar that our bodies run on, the fuel we need is sugar, but we're getting it with fiber in a way the body can easily handle it, where it has almost in every case, if it's, you know, if it's, if it's not a low water content fruit, it's going to be a low glycemic load fruit. And we're not going to tax the body if we're eating the whole foods. So do that. Uh, you know, eat the salads you need, you're going to do perfectly well. Okay? Hope that helps. I'll see you next time.